the winner of this clash will face Chelsea away in the third round. Yeah, what an incentive that is for both these teams as they come out onto the pitch at Brisbane Road. Chelsea away in the next round. Suspect it will be played at Kings Meadow and not Stamford Bridge, which I'm sure would interest a lot of Orient fans. But it, nonetheless, a London derby potentially awaits the O's if they can get past Newport County. But it won't be easy. No, it won't. Looking forward to this one. Now, both sides have got uh, players who have featured in the first team. Tanga and Dukuma, of course, for the O's. And there are four in the Newport County team. Yeah, indeed. And when you look at the, the Orient team, they'll be looking to obviously improve on what was a disappointing campaign last season when they were eliminated, of course, by Woking in the first round of the FA Cup. This season, faced a tough test on the road at Leverhead where they overcame an early goal, which was conceded by the O's, but turned out into a comfortable 3-1 victory on the night. So big night ahead for both these sets of players. And both are coming together in a huddle. As you say, Matt, uh, this is a big night, not least that the Orient youngsters aren't used to playing here at the Brayer Group Stadium. It's also a big night, I would imagine, for Scott Mudd, the uh, referee and his two assistants. Yeah, without a doubt, opportunity to uh, referee a game at ground like Brisbane Road, of course, under the floodlights, and I'd uh, say probably around 250 supporters below us in the, uh, the gallery area interesting as well looking below you can see Matt Harold and a couple of the coaching staff as well Simon Royce the goalkeeping coach Joe Gallen I think uh, saw down there earlier on so they're watching on they're keeping an eye on the young kids but to say this one all about the result who will get through into the next round against Chelsea and this time last week we saw a young Orient side overcome Charlton Athletic and there were so many graduates in that team yeah, this is what it's all about, of course, isn't it? It's uh, a conveyor belt trying to break into the first team. In recent years, there's been a few Orient products who've done that and made a success, of course, more recently. Probably Moses Odebajo, the highest profile. And gone on to much bigger things. Now QPR, of course. But this is the test for these players. It's not only, of course, tonight's game. It's just that continue building of momentum to try and break into Kenny Jackett's first team squad. And it's going to be the Exiles to get this game off and underway. And in the first half, they'll be attacking the stand away to our right, which is, of course, the Coronation Gardens end. The Tommy Johnson stand. The referee just checking with these two assistants. In the moment, it will be Newport County to get this game off and underway. And the ball deliberately played out to the right-hand side. And uh, some defending for the O's to do in the early stages of this one. And it's late Orient who try to work the ball f free, but uh, Newport County fighting hard in midfield. They've conceded possession now, and it's Tanga on the right-hand side moving forward for Brian Sard's men. It's still with Tanga. He's got support here with Clements. Clements offers it out to Soji on the left-hand side, and that one's been overhit. So let's go through the lineups, Matt. Yeah, we'll start with the O's, of course. They line up with Noah Phillips in goal this evening. Looks as though it might be a back three for the O's with Kwashi on the right-hand side. Apat at centre-half. Soji on the left-hand side with a four in midfield. On the left will be Charlie Pegram. Then it's Harvest and Obiero in the centre midfield. Tanga on the right with a front three forward line of Smith. Kwasi, Dan Nkrumah, who skippers the side tonight. And on the left-hand side will be Antonio Clements. That's the line-up for the O's this evening. And it's Newport County that have possession and it's uh, conceded and Tanga again moving forward. And uh, well, that was old fashioned, wasn't it, from uh, Mingo. He played the ball into the empty East End on the far side. It's uh, Danny Elliott in charge of the youngsters from South Wales. Now he was uh, a first team coach under Mike Flynn, but has uh, taken over the youngsters at the start of this season, Nate Noyan playing in the Youth Alliance League Group C, where they're currently in ninth place, and also in ninth place, but there's 12 in the division in the South West Youth Alliance, which Newport County competing, but I'm sure 
that both Boyan Saar and Delia, uh, Danielli will be the first to say it's not about league placements, it's about development and he goes coming forward now. Tanga gets past one, then two and plays it into the penalty area and a shot that's fired in. That was an excellent finish from Smith Huase and you have to give credit also to Tanga. Oh, brilliant start for the O's and what a finish as well. Jeffy Tanga direct running with the ball at his feet and he just released it into the path of Rion Smith Kouassi who made a very clever and intelligent run. It was still a difficult angle for him because he struck the away low and hard. Goalkeeper Evan Ovendale had absolutely no chance. A really good start for the O's who lead here and hopefully that should give them a little bit of confidence now they've got that advantage. Well, we know that uh, Tanga has featured in the first team squad and that really was an excellent one. Yeah, it was. Uh, first saw Jeffy Tanga, I think, it was possibly two years ago in a pre-season game at Bishop Stortford. He's obviously very young and he's still very young, but again, his game's all about direct running and getting at defenders, taking them on. He doesn't mind the defensive side of things as well. He gets back, tracks back and works hard, but that was really bright, intelligent play from the O's and what a wonderful start for Brian Sars men. It was such a cool finish, but it's uh, the visitors now coming forwards. The ball goes out on the left-hand side. It's played into the Lake Noyant penalty area. An opportunity here, and it's a shot that is gathered well by Phillips. Shot from Evans. And, uh, well, he did well then, Phillips. Yeah, it was nicely struck from Caleb Evans, wasn't it? And so he felt him on the edge of the box. But so I'll probably be a little bit disappointed how much room he had. And they say technically it was a good strike. He got over the ball, hit it hard and low. He tried to use the zip off the surface. It... That's been raining in E10 this evening, but all credit to Noah Phillips, he dealt with it incredibly well. Tanga again picks up possession and again causes problems for the XLs. He's got past three defenders now. And he's got support wide right on the right hand side. The cross into the penalty and into the arms of the goalkeeper, Evan Overdale, at the near post. Now he often features in the first team squad for the XLs, but more as a cover. Yeah, he's obviously it. And goalkeeper and they're giving him that experience stepping up into the first team on a weekend just to try and again build that confidence they haven't got the depth at Newport and no surprise to see young players when they get into the manager's eyes as a potential one to come forward and help the depth there's no hesitation in bringing them through if they've proved that they can do it but he's already been beaten this evening and it was a wonderful strike wasn't it from Smith Kowalski to give the O's the lead. And now it's a case of can they try and build on that? But here come Newport on the right hand side. Harrison Bright playing the ball back to Jack Cardigan who plays it out to the left hand side. And squares it back and again it's the centre half looks on the right hand side. Cardigan again plays the ball down the channel. Well, the O's have looked neat and tidy at the back so far, haven't they, Matt, as uh, the ball is kept in play on this near side, but it's late night to pick up possession with Hanson Soje. lays it back to the goalkeeper, Phillips. It's the O's with Oberum. Plays it back to Apat. Apat plays it square. And Quayarchi plays it towards the halfway line. And that will be a throw to the visitors. Yeah, it will. And again, Newport at the moment had that one effort on goal, which Noah Phillips dealt with comfortably. But they'll be looking to get their foot on the ball and just try and build up some attack and try and bring in the two centre midfielders, Evans in particular and Dixon Kabongo, the highly rated youngsters in this team. But they'll be looking to them now as the O's bring it forward with a tanger again. Look at him, looking ahead of him, bright running. It really is. Richard J. Bourne has uh, appreciated the quality of the goal that separates the two sides. I'm sure that uh, plenty watching on would agree with you, Richard. As uh, Leighton Owen work hard for possession with Clements. And Clements, opportunity to shoot. He's laid it out to the right hand side. Tanga trying to create something here. And he goes for goal. And he tests over there again at the near post. There were other options. Yeah, I think Dan Nkrumah there will be a little bit disappointed that Tanga hasn't looked to square that ball he was in a good position as was Smith Kowasi Tango went for goal I think he was always going to be dealt with by Evan Ovendale as Newport try and play the ball down the orange right hand side Quachi 
Takes a first touch and it's closed down quickly there. He was, it was uh, very good work, wasn't it, by Ryan Phillips on the far side and it's a throw to late Noent in line with the O's penalty area. There's plenty of cup games tonight, Matt. We're just going to look up what the uh, the scores are, so I'll put Matt on the spot there. Here they are. Yeah, well, uh, kicking off at 7.45, most of them, Dave, so there won't be many updates, but one early kickoff is Bristol Rovers v Oxford, so that's currently nil-nil, four minutes gone in that one. And Kruma turns, mid range inside the O's half, of course. Leighton went looking comfortable on the ball. Watch he leads it long. Smith Quartzi sees the ball go away for a throw to Newport County. One that Charles Bullock, another one of the Newport County players that has featured in the first team, is going to take. He's played it to Rod Dugan. The ball is switched from left to right. Here's Harrison Bright. And, uh, Chasing is Clements, and forcing Newport County to play it back. It's high pressing, isn't it, from the oak? Yeah, they're working hard out there at the moment, aren't they? Just seem to have that little bit of edge in sharpness. Maybe it's that early goal, which has obviously just given them a, a little bit more confidence than the visitors from South Wales. And they'll be looking to try and get a foothold in this game. Looking to work the line here, but the ball is headed away from Zek Obiero. Another one, of course, who has been involved in Kenny Jackett's early pre-season. I think he went up to Scotland and travelled with the team. So the Obes probing it forward towards the halfway line and here's Tanga again. Look at his pace. Still with Tanga, that's a free kick and that was another dangerous one. Again, direct with the ball. Great to watch when he's in full flight as well. Very difficult to defend against as well because he's got quick feet. On that occasion, he just cut inside and they invited the challenge, it was a little bit of a lazy one, but it gives the O's a really good opportunity here. I think Obiero looks to be over this free kick. And there is height for him to aim for on the edge of the penalty area, including Harrison Soje. And the ball has been cleared. Late Nguyen tried to pick up the second ball, and they do so. It's uh, excellent work by Clements, and Clements chips it almost behind the Newport County defence and the free kick has been conceded and it's one for the Exiles. A little bit of a cheap one there from the O's tall centre half Mert Apat. Let's uh, Newport get out of jail a little bit there. Do you think Apat possibly realised that he was out of possession and having lost possession he needed to give away the free kick? He was showing maturity there wasn't he? I think it might have been a centre half playing in the uh, position up the top of the pitch there and the ball came to him in an unusual way and here comes Tanga yet again driving forward Tanga got caught then and that was a challenge born out of frustration and a free kick to late night I'm surprised uh, nothing is going to be said to Harrison Bright who played last Tuesday in the Papa John's Trophy against Swindon Town yeah, it was a little bit clumsy wasn't it really again Tanga seemed to evade the challenge but last moment there Bright just Left the boot in, caught Tanga. He's going to get up, which is a good positive sign. He will get clattered, particularly the way he plays a traditional winger, right-hand side. He's not the tallest, but he's a strong young man, and he gets up, which is good to see. Obiero has been taking all the set pieces for the O's so far, and he's going to take this one, although Tanga steps over the ball. Obiero curls that one into the penalty area. It's a decent free kick, and it almost fell to Clements. And Clements did well to regain possession and he's got support with Harvest. Ball into the box once more and Pegram with the shot comes back again to Pegram. Another shot and that's deflected wide for a corner. That's Charlie Pegram who is the younger brother of Reggie Pegram who's on the substitutes bench. Yeah, it took a deflection didn't it? It was Charles Bullock I think who was blocked it with the right knee. Will be a corner to the O's but bright play indeed from Charlie Pegram. First time we've really mentioned his name so far this evening. And he nearly found himself on the score sheet there. Corner kick for the O's. One that is delivered towards the edge of the six yard area. And Newport County clear, but no one forward for them. So Harvest 
There's time and space and options. He plays it out to the right-hand side. Late Noink concede. They need to defend here. And the ball is played back to Phillips. Phillips finds Tanga looking inside the O's half. He's definitely had more touches of the ball than anybody else, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been the bright spark, hasn't he, so far? You look at everyone else out on the pitch, Orient have definitely started the better, showing a little bit more confidence and a little bit more intelligence at times on the ball, but Tanga on that right-hand side in particular, every time he gets the ball in Newport County's half, you just feel something's happening and there's problems for the visitors. And, and I think that last challenge as well summed it up. It was a little bit reckless, a little bit clumsy, and they've already seen what a danger and a threat he poses. Piero plays it short to Pegram, and that's an excellent ball that finds Tango on the edge of the penalty on the right-hand side. It's still with Tango, goes on the outside of the defender. It's a low cross, it's a dangerous cross, it's an opportunity, and a second for the O's, and a second for Smith Carrasco, and again Tango the creator. Well, we were just talking about the O's having that little bit more confidence, but so important to build on the early advantage, and they've done that. 2-0 to the O's and again it's the same man Rion smith A brilliant finish kept a really cool head when the ball fell to him he took the touch but he didn't panic and did what all good strikers do and just put his laces through it hard and low and whilst there was a man on the line there was no way he was stopping that from going in the back of the net so what a start for Brian Sars young Orient side here 2-0 they lead there's a long way to go but it's a perfect start it really is. We've only played 13 minutes and late night, good value for the lead. There hasn't even been a half chance, has there, for the Exiles? No, there hasn't. Just that one shot from distance, really, which was comfortably dealt with by Noah Phillips. A wonderful double from Smith Kuasi has given the O's momentum here. As I say, the prospect of playing Chelsea in the next round. What an incentive that is. It looks as though that uh, really has motivated these Orient players. They're led, of course, by Brian Sauer, who started his career as a 16-year-old, making his debut for the O's. And, of course, Alex Lawless is his assistant. Now, I can remember Justin Edinburgh often commenting uh, uh, post-match about how hard Alex Lawless trained as the ball played into the O's penalty area. And it's the Pats has put it away for a corner to the visitors. Their first corner of the match, the first time really, they got the ball into the O's penalty area. Yeah, it was a decent delivery actually from Jack Carradigan. I say just lofted it in and it is into a dangerous area. Full credit to Mert Apat, the centre half, made sure there was no way a Newport player was going to get there ahead of him, but it has gone out for a corner here. It's a, a corner which uh, is delivered towards the edge of the penalty here. Bright with the strike, with the uh, air shot really, wasn't it? Almost opened up for him. He did have a bit of space. It was a well-worked corner, actually. Clearly one they'd worked on from the training ground. There was three runners around the penalty spot. All ran forward and it left a little bit of space for Bright on the edge of the box. But it was always going to have to be a wonderful strike to hit it on the volley. First time and beat Noah Phillips from there in the end. So he didn't really connect well and the danger has been averted. It was interesting listening to an interview by and on one of the uh, podcasts recently and he was talking about how important it is that the players work as they go forward again and it was an opportunity for a hat-trick there for young Smith to our seat. It opened up for him. You'd be disappointed he's not put the ball in the back of the net because as you say it opened up for him. It was a misjudgment really at the back from Easton Evans and the ball bounced over his head. Smith Kowarsi was bright on it in a flash. He just tried to open his body up, you can see what he was trying to do, put it in the bottom corner, but it was too close to the goalkeeper. It's been a really good start for the O's here, and they're looking for that third already. You're saying that Brian Sarr was uh, talking about how they look at the education of the uh, players as well as the development on the pitch. And you do get the sense that there's a real connection between this youth team and the first team. And Nate Knight very proud of the development of these young players. And they have impressed so far tonight. So it's Soji. Lays it out to Charles Pegram, who's their first time touch, let him down on that occasion. So Evans on the right hand side. Plays it short. So Anderson Bright is uh, challenged by Soji, and that's going to be a throw 
to Newport County. I think they're looking to make a substitution as well. The visitors already sent Jonah Williams for a, a warm-up. You can see he was maybe just being told to get himself ready, whether that's because of the scoreline or one of the players is feeling a little bit. Maybe a, a muscle problem. We'll wait and see, but it looks as though Newport are thinking about a change. Williams is a striker. And it's uh, Dugan who's over the ball. He's not going to take the uh, free kick. In fact, he might. No, it isn't. It's uh, a ball that's uh, drilled in from Stokes. It's never going to really trouble uh, Phillips. He takes the ball towards the edge of the penalty area. An impressive opening 17 minutes this has been for Brian Sars now. Late nine. Again, move forward. And Kuma, the captain, playing the ball out to Tanga. Tanga inside the XL's penalty area. And he's got support from Oriero, whose uh, shot takes a deflection. And Late Nine had their second quarter of the night. That was a great play from Dan Nkrumah, wasn't it? Again, just Udi's shoulder lent into the Newport player and he was away. We talk about men against boys at the moment. It's boys against toddlers, you feel, Dave, because or in really are commanding this game, aren't they? They're looking bright, they're looking sharp, looking stronger and fitter than Newport. They've got the two-goal advantage and they'll be looking to build on that from this corner. Zach Obiero is the man who's going to take this corner kick. And with the right foot, the ball is played towards the edge of the six-yard area. The clearance isn't the best. Almost picked up by Clements. And it comes back now to Harvest. Emmanuel Harvest finds Tanga. Correctly. And now the ball is played from left to right. Outstanding passing. Soji. Always on the outside of Tom Stokes and gets the better of Stokes. It's a low cross. Shirt almost found a red shirt. Again, late night, picking up the second ball. And Kruma has got support from Obiero. Kuma again with the shot that goes wide of the far post. It was worth a go. It wasn't a bad effort at all, was it? You say, saw it open up for him momentarily. An ambitious strike with the left foot, but he really did put his laces for it. And they just had a little bit too much movement there for the Newport goalkeeper in the end. It went wide of the post, but again, really bright from the O's. Newport County have been pinned back in their own half almost from the get-go. They're struggling to keep possession of fine passes because late night they're just working so hard. Charlie Pegram possibly trying too hard according to Scott Wood on that occasion. It yeah, looks a soft one but uh, as Newport try and take it quickly the referee pulls it back and asks him to retake it from the right position. Scott Rudd the referee this evening trying to exert his authority early on in the game and in the end Newport play the ball back to the goalkeeper from the resultant free kick it's with Coward Ogan on the right hand side now he featured in a pre-season friendly against Cardiff and uh, has represented Wales at the under 18 level and he plays it out to the left hand side the ball delivered long chasing is Morgan a bit of pressure on Apat. He lays it back to Phillips and again impressed by the quality of the defending men. Well, again, they've looked strong all over the park so far, the O's. And what fascinates me, Dave, is that they play the same shape as the first team, whether that's instructions from Kenny Jackett or whether they're just utilising what they feel is best for the players they have in the team. It's quite interesting, but so you can see similarities to say certain players in certain positions. It's, uh, Quachi's under a little bit of pressure but does incredibly well in the end to play his way out of danger. We played the Southampton under 21s, didn't we, in the Papa John's Trophy. Now they have a deliberate policy of uh, the youngsters shadowing the uh, formation of the first team as Newport County come forward now with Harold Ogan. And he is dispossessed by Harrison Sojay and delivers it long. Two man, two goal man, Smith uh, Rossi, so pressing forward, but uh, trying too hard on that occasion. 
think the youngsters as well are just relishing playing on what is a wonderful surface for them. So seen the youth team on quite a few occasions over the last 12 months or so, and it's very difficult for them. In games, whether it's played at the training ground or Whitbridge Sports, it's, it's really tough. Say, so not the best playing surfaces, particularly around the winter months, but say for them this evening, this will be like a bowling green for them. They'll be absolutely loving the pitch, the standard, the environment, floodlights, and so a decent number of supporters as well down in that gallery area cheering them on. And the ball has gone away for a throw to the O's. Who are waiting for the ball to be retrieved? Of course, whenever Leighton went play Newport County you always think of Justin Edinburgh who achieved so much with both clubs and he was somebody that took youth development so seriously and if it wasn't for the promotion that he achieved with both the O's and the Exiles of course uh, it's much much harder to have youth developments in the National League. Duarsi crossing the halfway line unchallenged threads it forward and it breaks now to Nkuma and it's a uh, the ball forward opportunity here with the shot oh what a finish and he celebrates and it's a goal that is worth celebrating the third coming after 23 minutes and just look at the players surrounding the goal hero and it's excellent work Daniel and Kruma then the captain with his first goal of the night and you do get the sense it could be his first goal it's about how many now surely Matt been an emphatic start hasn't it but, but that was a superb goal Dave I mean he had so much to do there but really quick feet and again just for me just looked that little bit sharper looked as though he wanted the ball more but even so when he got the ball onto the left foot he hit it through the goalkeeper's legs really sharp finishing from the Krumah. we've already heard Kenny Jackett mention his name one or two occasions this season so he's a bright spark and that was a fantastic finish but 3-0 what a wonderful start for Brian Saar. And the Newport County players are looking a li little bit dejected at the moment. They're chasing shadows. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a big experience if you're on the right end of an early three-goal advantage as the ball is played back to uh, Phillips. But it's tough, isn't it, now for these Newport County youngsters. A real test of their character as the ball has been conceded again opportunity for the O's to come forward Tanga causing the difficulties and the ball is eventually cleared by Ryan Phillips another one of the Newport County players that has been featured in the first team yeah you're right it'd be interesting to see how Newport can lift their heads if they can of course it's a long journey for them Newport to London some of these players probably wouldn't have traveled that far for a, for a game before I know you look at the teams around them in their division but here comes Tanga Low ball into the penalty area, almost broke for Smith Kuasi. It's a foul that has uh, been conceded by Harrison Bright and a free kick to the O's. Quickly taken, ball goes back to Soje. Pegram plays it inside to Obiero. Those dominating possession. Nelson Soje on the left hand side moving forward again with purpose and it opens up for him. And Kuma with a curling cross into the arms of the goalkeeper. That was a decent delivery from the Kuma on this left hand side again. Asking questions. Fair play to the goalkeeper. Even Oven Dell has already conceded three tonight, but so you wouldn't have known it the way he came in, collected that cross because it had a real whip about it from. Nkrumah really fizzed it over and already looking to build on this three goal advantage he's probably the outstanding player for Newport County so far he's made one decent save and as you say he's gathered a couple of crosses um, it's definitely not his fault that they're three down he hasn't had much help from his teammates has he I mean, maybe when he looks back the first one got beat on his near post from Smith Glass he might look back on that and felt he could have done better but certainly had no chance with the second or the third goal and he hasn't had much support from his defence in front of him so he could try and build something on the left hand side with Charles Bullock but yet again Clements is there with a really important tackle and here come the O's again it opens up for them as the O's come forward with uh, Emmanuel Harvest keeps possession playing with such confidence it's still with Harvest 
He's got support here from Nkuma. Trying to pick out Pegram. Pegram goes down on the edge of the box. But Pegram's regained possession inside the penalty area and late night force another corner. That was excellent. Sheer persistence from Charlie Pegram. That was good work from him, wasn't he? Again, I know another player who's highly rated last year. He was called up to train with the first team on a number of occasions. Still very small. I think that was a good experience for him. I know he had in particular a lot of mentoring from the likes of Joby McEnough, which I'm sure would have added tremendous value to him. I haven't seen him too much this evening, but what we have seen, he's been very bright. Zach Obiero is the man who's going to take this corner kick. And he's got plenty of red shirts to aim for inside the penalty area. And the ball is again delivered towards the edge of the six-yard box. Tanga heads it back to Harvis. And Harvis will regain possession for the O's after his initial pass was a little short. The ball is fired into the box and it finds Charlie Pegram with space. Pegram, quick feet, options to his left and to his right. And he goes for goal and it was worth a sh shot. It's blocked. Come out to Obiero. He's won the free kick and there's a Newport County player down on the far side and maybe County are going to make the change now, Matt. Yeah, straight away, Jonah Williams called back to the bench. He was already going for a strenuous warm-up, but I think that decision has now been made for Danny Elliott. He's been forced into a change here and Williams will come on. Well, we on Smith Kuasi, of course, with two goals already tonight. Now, that's the youngest player in the O side. He's still on the under-16s. Yeah, it's interesting as well. I was reading a, an article with him in the match day programme a number of weeks ago, and he, he said it, he actually said in there he, he didn't really take football too seriously until he was 12 or 13 years old. He, he said it was just one of those things he'd have a kick around with his mates, but he never really sort of had any sort of prospect of putting himself in this position and the potential to become a, a, a pro. So it's been a rapid development for him and. Again, even from a, a positional sense, he said he, he didn't really see himself as a striker. He played in centre midfield when he's sort of been playing sort of schoolboy football. But I say tonight, he's taken his chances really well. He had an opportunity for the hat-trick, which he may look back on and think he, he could have been a little bit sharper. But as I say, he's looked a handful and so have his teammates. Tanga in particular on the right-hand side has caused real problems for Newport County. We're talking about uh, younger members of the squad, Tom Stokes is probably the youngest member of the Newport County side. He, he seems to be suffering from uh, a bit of cramp there. Yeah, he just pulled up, didn't he? It's the, the back of the right hamstring, which he's just trying to stretch out. I think Williams looks as though he's going to come on. Indeed, he is. So that is the end of Tom Stokes' evening. And it's been a pretty miserable one, hasn't it? He's had a long journey to London. His team are 3-0 down. And now, unfortunately for him, he has to leave the pitch through an injury. Approaching the half-hour mark. And the O's have impressed. And they have another free kick. They go inside the Newport County half as the uh, fourth official. Just uh, shows everybody in the stadium the, uh, the board. And there's a little of applause from the supporters situated in the gallery. And goes with this set piece. Zach Obiero has taken most of them so far and he's going to take this one with the right foot. He's got a curl in it and it's uh, headed away and that will be late night's third corner of the night. I've been impressed with the set pieces. Yeah, again, another good delivery into a dangerous area. And again, wasn't sort of floated in, it was struck by power, it was waiting for someone to attack the ball, there was a couple of Orient players, Soji was one of them, Apat was another at the back post, Newport player had to win the header, he did so, but can only present Orient with a chance from the corner. Obiero is the man who's going to take it, right drizzle in the E10 at the moment, it's a decent corner, the header from Apat goes out for a goal kick. Again flighted in asking for one of the Orient players to go and attack it. Just felt APAC there was just stretching for it at the back post, a difficult header. So he was just trying to use those neck muscles but couldn't quite get there. 
And Newport again get caught in possession. Tanga looked as though he got caught late there and Tanga gets to his feet. But here come Newport on the left hand side. He's being targeted a bit now, isn't he, Tanga? As a late night concede a free kick, it was Clements with the tackle on Ododen. And that's a free kick to the Exiles and a rare opportunity for them to get players forward. Charles Bullock is another of the youngsters that are featured in the county first team squad. He looks as if he's going to take this free kick. Evans has moved forward. So to Morgan, the captain. I don't think I've mentioned his name so far. Have now. So a free kick to Newport County. You've got Plenty of shirts lined up on the edge of the O's penalty. The ball is played into the six-yard area. Again, good defending by the O's. Coming out to the right-hand side, and it was overhit. Heavy first touch from Evans. He featured in the Papa John's Trophy against uh, Plymouth Argyle in an earlier round. Yeah, I thought that was intelligent defending there from the O's left back, Harrison Soji. Could have easily lunged in there and made an unnecessary tackle he was in the 18 yard box but he just stood up and waited for the Newport player to take that touch he knew that he had the strength and the speed to ensure that he got to the second ball first and in the end he went out for a goal kick but this is again impressive stuff from the O's being emphatic comprehensive deserved of the three goal advantage they currently have and Alex Lawless and Brian Sarr down there they'll be absolutely delighted very satisfied as the throw is taken by Pegram. Again, Newport County so careless with the ball. Harvest offers it out to the right. Ball is hit long. Comes out to Tanga. Tanga fights so hard for possession, and he's got it. He's also got support. It's with Harvest. Duarchi back to Harvest. Manuel Harvest taking his time, little cheeky flick, trying to find Tanga. And the back pass is cleared by Avondale. Leo's looking composed at the back. Soji plays it out to the left and Charlie Pegram. Pegram cuts inside, plays it into the centre circle. He packed to Phillips and the goalkeeper with the clearance down the centre. Did he handle them, Matt? Yeah, it looked a little bit harsh, didn't it? I'm not sure there was too much he could do about that. The ball came back off of Kabono. Just it hit him, really, on the on the left arm. So I'm not sure he could have got out of the way of it, but Newport have taken it quickly. They have, and they read the ball into the penalty. It's a shot which is parried away at the near post by Phillips. It's a decent one, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was Charles Bullock, wasn't it, on that left-hand side, who just cut in. First time we've really seen him do that this evening. It was a decent strike over Phillips on a greasy surface. Did enough to stop the initial effort and the O's defence were there to come to his rescue. And so that's probably the first effort on goal we've seen from Newport for a long time. I'll make it the first effort that we've seen of note. It's a throw on the far side, which uh, Evans is going to take. That's the return ball. Late point we gain possession. So hit long by Clements. Smith Huasi on the right hand side with the low cross and Kuma well to bring that one under control on the edge of the penalty. His shot is blocked at point blank range. The referee ducks out of the way. There's Newport County with Gilly Evans. That's the ball towards the halfway line. Again, you have to give credit to the O's for their high pressing. That decision, though, went against Clements. Ball fired back to Evendale, the goalkeeper. Seems to go forward uh, the ball then. Yeah, just miscontrolled it, didn't he? Fortunately, there was no Orient player within the vicinity, so he was able to uh, get away with it. But I say, it wasn't the best of back passes to him either. And so on a greasy surface, I say, no surprise to see him miscontrol it. It wasn't the easiest to uh, bring into possession. But here come the O's with Pegram. Pegram 
plays it all the way back to Noah Phillips. Phillips chips the ball down the centre. Glance and header goes behind Nkuma. Before the game, we were talking about how far late night have gone in this competition. Now, you can remember Blackburn Rovers and also West Ham, which goes back a few years. Is that in the fifth round? Yeah, I don't think it was that far into the competition day, but I think it was probably around 04, 05. I remember watching the O's at Upton Park, uh, even which sadly the O's were beaten that night. I remember Jason Dimitru was skipper for the O's youth team and way, way back, I think probably 27 years ago now, I remember the O's beating Chelsea at Stamford Bridge 2-0. Darren Purse with a double that night. And say so one of my earliest memories, actually, and say great feeling to see the O's victory getting to victory on that occasion and of course he went on and played in the first team and went on to have a very prolonged career in the football league even played in the premier league did darren Perth. so again always interesting to watch these youngsters and hopefully they can continue their run not only tonight but in the next round if they are successful newport county losing out again and it's Clements driving forward. He got tripped then. And the referee, well, he was uh, good refereeing then. He waited to see if the ball was going to break to Tanga. Almost did, but it didn't. So that's why the whistle was blown. And late night have a free kick. Another opportunity to push players forward as the O's search for fourth before the half-time couple. And talking about half-time, uh, Paul Hitchcock's going to join us together with Barry Galvin. And we'll not only be talking about the youngsters, but we'll also be looking back on the season so far under Joe Gallen and Kenny Jacket. And you're welcome to uh, tweet in with your questions. As this free kick from Abiero is played into the box and into the arms of Evan Obeda. That one was a little bit comfortable, wasn't it, for the Newport goalkeeper? It was just clipped in by Obiero and... They pat the centre half with a header, but no real power in it, and dealt with easily by the Newport goalkeeper. They're still struggling to get a foothold in the game, but they are showing a little bit more passion out there. The visitors making a few more tackles, and so if they can pull one back before half time, I think Danny Elliott will be relieved at that because we still feel Orient going forward pose a real threat, particularly through Nakrum Matanga. And of course, the man who's already got two goals this evening, Rion Smith Kuasi. Iston Evans. The free kick played into the danger zone, and it's headed over the bar. It took a deflection, so uh, Newport County have a second corner of the match. A decent delivery, put into the mix, and say Newport players there competing and. In the end, got the rub of the green. I think it may have been Caleb Evans who got his head to it. But it will be a corner. It'll be taken on that far side by Jack Caradogan. Be a right footed in swinger. Anti forward for the Exiles, and it's a, a short corner. And it's a turn, and it's a wayward shot that goes high up into the air and late night struggling to clear the danger here opportunity for a shot from county again it took a deflection and again it's another corner and the strike on that time was from caradona yeah, a little bit spell of pressure from newport I say is head towards the half time whistle I say just a little bit of sustained pressure for the o's here i think this is Rodogan again is the man who's going to take this corner kick. He goes lead to maintain their focus. This one chipped towards the edge of the six yard area. He pack clears. You put working hard for the second ball. And they have it now on the left hand side. It's uh, Tanga battles back for the O's. And you have to give credit to uh, Danny Elliott's men. As I said, I was a bit concerned about uh, their well being. They looked really down when they conceded the third. As uh, coming out of the penalty here to prevent Leighton White from grabbing the fourth is uh, Evan Avondale. But they've fought back well. They're showing character, aren't they? Yeah, I don't think they've, they've really managed to get a foothold in the game and start asking questions of the O's, but they're, they're showing a little bit of more competitive nature out there. So trying to win that second ball, but again, Egram steals it. Necroma places it forward. Opportunity here for Clements, and Clements has got 
Charlie Pegram on the edge of the penalty is in the box now is uh, Pegram goes on the outside of the defender and he'll settle for the corner yeah, there's a good recovering tackle from Carrad Hogan there Pegram just looked to roll the ball past him so he defended it well in the end will be a corner to the O's and no surprise to see Soji and APAT making their way up towards the 18 yard box plenty of questions coming through at Dulcet Dave for the half time chat as we look back on the season so far it's a corner for the O's which uh, Obiero is going to take Barry Galvin and Paul Hiscock join us you'll have to bear with us because we're sharing one mic here aren't we uh, Matt but we'll do our best this uh, corner is played short to the edge of the O's at a Newport penalty area and Tango's forced another corner again slightly surprised that one wasn't put into the box particularly with Apat Soji Smith Kwasi Nakuma all waiting for it he went short in the end probably got a little bit of luck Mate, this time it will be put in I'm sure it will and it is and it's a header that goes out to Clements Clements losing out and Helgogan on the left hand side he was challenged by Harvest he did so well there and the back pass finds Noah Phillips long clearance from Noah Phillips met by Mongo and it's Tango again on the right hand side taking on three players past two still with Tango the persistence was from Kabongo and late might have the free kick. He's taking some punishment, hasn't he, Tango? Yeah, but it's all part of his development, of course, being able to take those hits time and time again. It's up his strength and resistance. I'll say on that occasion, Kabongo just lent into him and flew in with a tackle, but Tango gets up yet again, gets to his feet, waits for his teammate Zach Obiero to come over onto that far side in front of the east end take this free kick with the right foot plenty of height to aim for inside the exiles penalty area and the free kick is uh, picked up inside the box by Clements and they pat with a shot which uh, well in the end hit the roof of the uh, north stand opened up for him it was worth a go it was a bit of a centre half effort wasn't it he was just leaning back, he was off balance. Got the power, but it was never really troubling Evan Ovendale. But neat, neat and tidy again from the O's, and Clements in particular picking up that second ball. Been impressed with him tonight, Been impressed with a lot of them. In the last minutes of the opening 45, Alex Lawless and Brian Sarr giving out the instructions. Both will be very pleased, and both will want to make sure that it's a clean sheet before half time. Apat with a firm header. And Smith Grassi pressing forward. It's gone away for a throw to the O's. And Charlie Pegram takes quickly. And Kuma in front of the corner flag. Three minutes to be added on. And late night have a throw just in front of the corner flag. And Kuma, of course, recently signed a contract to commit his future for the O's. And you do get the sense that it's a big future ahead of him. Just taking the time over the throw. There's not a lot of movement. The throw is taken nevertheless. And late might have forced their sixth corner of the first half. Yeah, no chance to add a fourth before this half time whistle. No surprise again. APAT comes forward, as does Soji. Just be around that penalty spot. She wants something to attack it. The Obiero once again takes all the set pieces, doesn't he? Arms aloft. This corner, play towards the near post. The clearance comes out to Tanga. Late Noy regained possession very quickly. And it's played into the centre circle, and that was a little careless by QRC. An opportunity here, and Newport County denied by the woodwork. Well, it was a, a determined run by Morgan and Lake Noyant living dangerously. It's a corner and not a goal for the XR. Yeah, Emmanuel Quachi there, just with an error. He knew straight away he was in trouble and Williams, a substitute, a good first touch, set himself, looked to go low and hard to 
Noah Phillips, right-hand side. I wasn't sure if the keeper initially just got a fingertip to it. If he did, it was a wonderful save because it was that touch which saw the ball coming into the post and it came back at Williams. He couldn't react first and Orient cleared their lines. It's a big moment in the game, that. Dodugan is the man who's going to take the resulting corner. It's Kiwachi that uh, cleared the danger. Is it the O's with Harvest finds Tanga and this time his first touch lets him down. It's a throw to Newport County. Charles Bullock to take midway inside the O's half. And Tanga coming forward again. He finds Nkuma. It's back now with Soji. Kuma. Was good ball to Clements. Clements inside to Pegram. Pegram did well to ride a couple of challenges and the left foot strike was on target. It was blocked. Yeah, it was a good block in the end from Caradogan. Clever feet from Pegram. Shifted it quickly onto his left. Could see what he was trying to do. Hit it going hard with the left foot. Important block to keep the game at 3-0. And that's it, that's the half-time whistle, and that was a very, very good far, first half from Brian Sars men, and in particular the youngest player in this O squad, Smith Kuasi, took his first two goals inside the 12 minutes, opening 12 minutes very well. Tango involved in both, and then the third from Daniel, Daniel Nkuma. Um, and there could have been more, Matt. Yeah, wonderful first half from an Orient perspective. Brian Saar and Alex Lawless will be absolutely delighted. I say, for me, the O's are emphatic. It's a really good finishing, a really good team performance. But we're only halfway there, of course. Uh, Newport showed a little bit of character. As you say, their heads could have gone down. But uh, they just stuck a foot in, particularly the last five or ten minutes. And they had that wonderful opportunity through the substitute, Jonah Williams. And you do feel, had he scored at 3-1, it may have been a different game but 3-0 as I say that Orient dressing room will be absolutely delighted Barry Galvin and Paul Hiscock now join us um, we're going to talk about the season so far but let's talk about the first half did you enjoy that one? I really did actually we've got some really handy players there I mean Jeff Tatanga what a player I mean he's been on the fringes of the main squad hasn't he you can see why that Kenny really likes him and Daniel Nkrumah uh, Enkrum, I should say. I don't want to start that controversy. Enkrum. Um, he showed his ability tonight and he's in the fringe of the squad. And it, I mean, there's some really good ball players out there. I like the, the look of, um, of Pegram, number 11, he looks good. And uh, Zekabiro on the ball, really tidy on the ball. Uh, seems to know each other quite well. And it was a really good performance, wasn't it? Really. Two goals from Smith QRC. Yeah, very good, uh, Dave. Um, I think half time scoreline more or less underlines um, the fact that a lot of this game has been one way traffic. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you but the chances the early chances that were created um, were so well taken and for a moment there um, when it was 2-0 um, about 20, 20 minutes on the clock and we were totally dominant um, Barry and I were just agreeing that we actually needed a third just to put it to bed once and for all and that third goal came um, as you were referring to there they did have a chance right at the end um, when uh, Emmanuel Kwachev uh, lost the ball Fair dues to him, he chased back and he put the guy under pressure and it might have been that pressure that he was putting under, um, caused a new port player to miss, although, to be honest, he should have scored, shouldn't he? But yeah, 3-0, um, Brian Sarr and Alex Lewis will be absolutely delighted. They will, and uh, Newport County for a while, I thought their heads were dropping, but give them credit, it must be so difficult when you're three down so early, but they continue to press forward. I think what you have to learn um, in, well, in any sport, but being a bit, especially particularly being a pro, is you have to keep at it no matter what. I mean, it's easy to say, not so easy to do, but they've got sports psychologists nowadays, haven't they, of most teams. Um, yeah, it's easy to let your heads drop. I think it's just pointless exercise, but you've got to keep doing what you were taught to do, trying to do, trust your teammates and keep at it. But, you know, human nature uh, comes into it, doesn't it? When you're three and you're down, you think, well, we've got to score four to win it. So, uh, yeah, you've got an uphill battle, obviously. I know that there's more players in the Newport County side that have played or been involved in the first team than there are on the own. Yeah, um, yeah, but I don't think you I don't think that would have been illustrated. I think if you'd have had known that said that fact Dave and just arrived here thinking well how many of these first team squad players um, 
it would have been Europe players that have caught your eye and the ones that Barry referred to early on, um, absolutely superb. But it has been a tr tremendous all-round performance, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been quite some, uh, I've been quite impressed with the maturity um, of, the, of the playing the final third. Um, rather than getting excited, lashing at the ball, the people trying to find each other in the box. Um, you know, little moves, little passes that, that show, as I say, I think this, this is the team that know each other well. Really good players. Can we open up the uh, conversation and involve Matt as well? We're going to look at the uh, season so far. We're inviting questions on at Dulcet Dave. We've had a couple of us al already, but uh, before we look at those questions, can I ask for your summary of the season thus far? We'll start with Matt Hiscock. Yeah, very well placed, Dave, I think, so far. And I say looking, looking good, the O's. Or maybe one or two questions around some of the draws, particularly here at Brisbane Road and also on the road in particular the late goals of course the ones that stick in the memory will be at Port Vale where the O's were leading going into added time and we know the outcome of that which is a real disappointment and then even on Saturday of course a, a late equaliser conceded so slight disappointment in, in a couple of results but overall very happy where the O's are positioned and Kenny Jacket and Joe Gallen got every confidence that they will secure a position for the O's at the end of the season which will see us move into League One. It was a statement of intent when Kenny Jackett and Joe Gannon were appointed and expectations were high, Paul. Have your head's, uh, expectations been met? Yeah, I'm delighted really, Dave, um, with where we are in the league table. It's all relative, isn't it? You're not going to get promotion after 15, 16 games. It's all about what's happened um, over the next 30. Uh, we've proven that we really are very, very hard to beat. Um, I think Joe Gallon and Kenny Jackett will be disappointed with the fact that Paul Smith has hardly been available. Um, the flashes that we've seen of him, um, and I'll refer to the most recent one in that, Papa John's, he looked an outstanding pl player, didn't he? I know we were playing a sort of a, a Charlton um, under 23 side almost, but um, he does look a good player, but he's never fit. And I think when he came in, a lot of the focus was on him. Um, and probably Darren Prattley as well. And um, Prattley, Perhaps for me, just hasn't made the impact I thought he might have done. But again, it's a long season and he is 36 years old. He needs fresh legs around him. Um, he'll come good. Um, he's got pedigree and I'm sure he'll become, he'll, he'll, he will come good. So, yeah, at the moment, fine. Still a work in progress. Uh, but I'm sure Kenny Jackett and Joe Gallon will uh, get that progress done. Okay, let's focus on the league. 16 games gone. Your thoughts? I, I, I think that our second, third will be better than the first and I think our third third will be better than the second I really do think that some um, you know trying to be objective it's hard when you're a fan isn't it but I think we are slightly below where we should be uh, having dropped some significant late uh, points um, and we're as good as anyone in the league on our day well obviously your day's got to be every week when you play consistency but we were better than Forest Green I think when we drew with them um, except I've only lost one game this year and that was to us 3-0 um, and I think that's We've got the strongest squad we've had here in many a year. I think that um, the players that come off the bench this season are as match or almost the match of the players that they replace, which is key, I think. And despite the fact that Paul Smith hasn't been featuring, um, the fact that we've still been doing playing reasonably well and, and, and scoring quite a few goals is, is good because you don't want to rely on one player in particular. And I do think that we'll finish the top six. I think we'll be in that area. I really do. David Blundell's been in touch, he would like to ask who's your player of the season so far and uh, also who's been disappointed? Well I think for me David it's, it's hard to pinpoint one individual but I say looking at that back line and the number of clean sheets that the O's have, have put in so far, Omer Beckles you certainly look at, he's been a huge acquisition for us and he's impressed, also popped up with a couple of goals as well which is important so He's, he's definitely been a key player for me. In terms of the disappointment, I think it's probably more from the, the lack of appearances, Paul Smith, because again, I think you look at the credentials he's got, I still feel he's going to be a massive player for us as the season goes on, but we just haven't seen enough of him. It's been really stop-start so far, so that would be the disappointment from my perspective, but I still feel, as I say, he will be a crucial player for us. Jay Bourne saying that uh, Exeter have only lost one game so far this season, and of course against the O's, and that shows how well we've done. But uh, let's go back to David Blundell's half-time question. You're welcome to put your question through at Dulcet, Dave. So, Paul, he's asking who is your player of the season thus far, and who's 
been a disappointment? Um, well, I echo the disappointment, Paul Smith, um, the lack of appearances. Um, a player of the season so far for consistency, probably Tom Jones at fullback. Um, I think has been absolutely superb. Matt mentioned um, our Beckles, and yeah, I mean the number of clean sheets that we've uh, kept. You've more or less say any of the back four, uh, plus the goalkeeper Lawrence Vigaru as well. Um, but as I said earlier, I think there's more to come. But certainly for me at the moment, it's Tom Jones as the most consistent player. I don't think I've ever met, I can't remember so many clean sheets, particularly here at Brisbane Road. But uh, for you, Barry, who's been the outstanding player thus far? I think Tom Jones is the best pullback in the league. I really do. He's been my outstanding player. I think Aaron Dryden as well, um, not being the, 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 the marquee sign, if you like. We're a better team when he's in the team. He works so hard and he's, and he's just, just deserts. He's just rewards. And again, obviously, the lack of appearances of Paul Smith has been the only disappointment. That's not on him personally. Obviously, he's injured, but that's been a disappointment. Nick Clark would ask, um, who and where do we need to strengthen in January when the window opens again? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because you still look at the likes of Smith and, and Callum Riley, of course, to come back into the team. But I think for me, the, the key area at the pitch, and, and maybe where we need a little bit more dominance is, is in the heart of midfield, that engine room, if you like. I know it's been mentioned before, the like of Steve Dawson or Roman Vincelot, someone who's going to take the game by the scruff of the neck and, and take you on to that next level. For me, that would probably be the, the key area. But as I say, with with uh, Callum Riley as well, still another player who's, who struggle with injuries, that, that potentially could be an area where he will come in and strengthen the O's. But again, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I agree with that, Matt. I think uh, games are won and lost in the midfield, aren't they? At the moment, uh, probably that is the... I won't say it's the most vulnerable area, but certainly it's the one that sticks out that we just need to up our game, the, the overall game of that midfield. And uh, I have to say that I've been impressed whenever I have seen him with that performance of Ibu Adams. Um, I know he's a bit marmite of some of the Orient fans for what he done, but uh, it's like that type of player that would make such a hell of a difference to us, in my opinion anyway. I'm going to agree there. I mean, I've said that we've got the strongest squad we've had in the while, and I, and I do believe that. But I think it's the only place we've got maybe limit, more limited options uh, in central midfield. And, um, and the likes of Callum Riley coming back may address that. But um, I'm happy to say there's no, there's no glaring, to me anyway, there's no glaringly obvious puzzle piece that's missing at the moment, I think. It strikes me that uh, during this uh, summer, a lot of squads, they got better players because more were available. But, uh, there's not many that have the depth in the squad that they already have. And actually, when you look at some of the stronger squads, you probably would say Mansfield Town and Salford City, they're sort of underachieving. So I'd like to open it up now in terms of looking at the division. We know that this time last year, sides that were in the top three actually didn't even reach the playoffs, a couple of them. Um, and Bolton Wanderers, who were closer to the relegation zone when we played them in February, went up automatically so it's still very early stages in the season let's open it up to which sides have impressed you and which ones do you think are underachieving well of course we're yet to see every team aren't we from an orient perspective but say one team i, I do have me on at the moment because they're in a, a really rich vein, vein of form is northampton town and we go there in a couple of weeks time so i think that will be a really important game uh, as i say they're on a, a really good run I have to say Forest Green and, and Harrogate have surprised me, but, but I still question whether they've got the depth in their squad to continue that momentum. And we saw last season Harrogate were off to a good start, but they fell away and I anticipate that may happen again. Bradford are always one you've got to keep an eye on. Derek Adams, of course, knows his way to promotion. He's done it before. If he gets Bradford going, they could be a force. But for me at the moment, Dave, that, that's where the strength is, the O's, because I feel that we should have enough to continue momentum in the second half of the season and go for that top three. Now he's gone to do his uh, duties on the mic just in case there's a substitution, Paul. Uh, just before the second half kicked off, who are the sides that have impressed? Um, <laughs> I can't say the way they've played against us, but I think Ex Exeter City um, know what it takes to get out of this division. I think this could be their year for making... Um, an automatic place. Bradford City, as Matt said, um, I, I, 
admired what Derek Adams did at Morecambe. I think he was terrific. Um, they've got crowds there. They must act like a 12th man to them on a number of occasions, particularly when they're successful. But I still think that we'll win this division day. There you are. There you go. That's uh, Paul and Barry. Thanks for joining us at half time. Thanks for your uh, questions. Of the final word at half time. Richard J. Bourne says Shadrach Ogi has been absolutely quality, and he has been. Doesn't look as, as if either side have made a change at the break, uh, Max. No, it doesn't. It's as we finish the half, and no surprise from an Orient perspective, they'll just want to keep building. But I think we might see a change from the visitors because it looks as though Malachi Graham is getting ready to come on there. We'll wait for confirmation as to who he's replacing. As the uh, fourth official waits patiently down on the touchline with the board. We will find out imminently. And it is going to be a substitution. Evan Cadwallo that's uh, come off. I don't think I mentioned his name in the first half. The reason I didn't, I, I know I didn't mention his name, is because uh, the reason I got all this detail about Newport County was I was talking to Evan's dad uh, before the game and he was very helpful and I asked him about Evan and what he could tell me about him. Guess what he said, uh, Matt? No, he said he, he doesn't make his bed. <laughs> well, that's the kind of stuff you need for commentary, isn't it? A little bit of insight as to what these youngsters are like at home. But yeah, they say it's a big night for not only the players, but the families as well who've travelled to support Newport County at the moment. They won't be enjoying what they're seeing, of course, but they will feel a little bit more spirited in terms of the last five minutes of that half because you just felt Newport came back into it slightly and they created and had a good opportunity of course to capitalize on a Quachi error but unfortunately Jonah Williams was able to make it count. It's like for like it's a defender for a defender with uh, Graham on so what about these lineups in the second half Matt? Well, for the O's it's as you were with Noah Phillips in goal it's a back three of Quachi on the right hand side a in the centre half Soji on the left with a midfield four of Tanger on the right, Obiero and Harvest, the two centre midfielders, with Pegram on the left, and a front three of Nakruma, Smith Kawasi, who's playing down the middle, Nkrumah Moore on the right hand side, with Clements joining them. So 3 4 3 formation for the O's. And for Newport, it's Ovendale in goal, Ryan Phillips, Easton Evans, Harrison Bright, Charlie Bullock, Dixon Kabongo, Caleb Evans, Ethan Morgan. Tom Stokes, of course, came off in the first half. Malachi Graham and Jonah Williams, the two substitutes to come on. Clements working hard, almost got behind the Newport County defence then. The county looking tighter at the back since conceding the third. And uh, in the end, the ball went away for a throw. I can't imagine why Morgan would have thought there would have been any other decision then. Almost beat himself, didn't he? I think he was just trying to con the linesman, wasn't he? In fact, the Justin Edinburgh stand, but he had a good view of it, more than five yards away, so made the right decision, and it was a fairly simple one, if we're honest. Soji on the left, plays it back to Apat, and Apat plays it square. Guachi, his late moment build on the right hand side with Clements, his Tanga. It will settle for the throw. Tanga's caused so many problems for the XLs throughout the evening so far. And it's Tanga's throw. Gets the return ball. And again, there's that little burst of pace. Plays with his head up and he goes forward. Plays with courage as well. Nate Noyant working hard to win the second ball and they do so. So pinged forward by Harvest out to the left hand side is Charlie Pegram played into the penalty area almost worked yeah, it just broke down there that final pass but again prior to that Jeff De Tanga real positive running and the goalkeeper's in trouble here Dave oh what a calamity and he's crossed the line that has gone over the line 4-0 to the O's well, it was an absolute calamity by Evan Ovendale the Newport County goalkeeper and the crewmer with the interception, the ball goes over the line. It was clearly over as well. A good couple of yards and the youth team players celebrating in front of the club photographer, enjoying that one. 
as I say, the goalkeeper won't want to watch that again. No, he won't. That was embarrassing. There wasn't really any pressure on him at all. It just crept over the line. Yeah, watching it again now, as you say, he just, he just needed to put the laces for it. I'm not sure why he took the touch initially. He just needed to clear the ball and, and say, no doubt about it, across the line by a good yard or two. You have to give credit to Daniel Kruner because it was his high pressing that put the pressure on the goalkeeper. He wasn't expecting it. Yeah, and we've seen that a lot this evening from the Orient forward line. Again, trying to close down the ball quickly, forcing the error. And on that occasion, as you say, a greasy surface, but the goalkeeper had to clear the ball. Not sure why he was looking to play the ball out, take the touch. He put himself in real trouble and as the ball goes out on the far side. It's just that early tonic that the O's needed just to keep building and say a fourth goal, 4-0. Four They're looking forward to Chelsea in the next round. It is a, a very attractive reward for the O's. Surely they're on course now. There's a pat, it's the ball high up into the air, and it is all about the carrots now of uh, Danny Elliott's side. As Lake Noyant looked to increase the scoreline. Well, yeah, of course, two players on a hat trick, of course, Rion Smith Kouarsi and Dan Nakruma, the O skipper, both with a brace. They'll be looking to get that match ball, won't they? On what could be a memorable night for them here under the floodlights at Brisbane Road. There's uh, the defender there, Callum Ryan Phillips, you have to give him credit, done well to shadow the ball out for a goal kick. Goal kick which uh, Evendale takes, goes out to the left hand side, again high pressing for the O's, who keep possession inside the Exiles half. Spoke too soon. The free kick has been conceded for the challenge on Godogan. Opportunity for Newport County in this second half to push players forward. What's happening elsewhere? There are a few FA Cup replays tonight, of course. Bristol Rovers, that was an early kick off. They lead Oxford by a goal to nil. There's been early goals as well elsewhere. Cambridge leading Northampton by a goal to nil. Cheltenham leading Gillingham by a goal to nil. Rochdale lead at Knox County. And here come the Rovers again, but it's dealt with well in the end. As we can tell you, Plymouth are also a goal up at home to Sheffield Wednesday and Hartlepool lead on the road at Wickham. There's an upset, so it is a throw to the O's. Which Tanger is going to take. Tanger gets the return ball on the right hand side. And the flag went up. Thanks to Clements, a little naive on that occasion. Rochdale goal up at uh, Notts County. Did you see there was over 12,000 at Meadowland on Saturday? Absolutely remarkable, isn't it? And so normally one of the, uh, I suppose, habits on a Sunday morning is looking at the attendances across leagues. But this year in the National League, it's, it really is being sensational. The support that's being given, of course, Wrexham have attracted new supporters with their owners, but also the traditional club. The likes of your Stockports are still putting in really good gates. Grimsby as well, six and a half thousand have been getting at home some really competitive games in that National League. Thankfully the O's aren't in it. We got out at the right time. Absolutely, there's a lot of money that's been spent in football's uh, fifth tour. It's here. But because Lake Noyance win the Football League, as are Newport County, thanks to Justin Edinburgh, both these clubs are looking to develop young talent. It's late night chances that have impressed so far tonight with 52 minutes gone and again it's another foul on Tango. I'm surprised that Scott Rudd isn't speaking to any of these Newport County players because um, it simply isn't fair at the punishment that Tango's receiving. Yeah, you do feel he needs a little bit of protection from the referee. I mean, that was just a clumsy challenge again from Carradigan. No intent to play the ball, just took Tango out. Soji? It's the ball to Nkrumah, looks so comfortable on the ball as he turns and moves forward with purpose. Newport County on that occasion are able to clear the danger. Imagine that uh, Saar and Lawless are thinking about maybe making changes and giving some of the other youngsters that are on the bench an opportunity to impress and also to experience playing here at the Bray Group Stadium. And Newport County are coming forward now. Ball is on the right-hand side. 
cross into the box and a rare touch for Noel Phillips. I think it's his first touch in the second half. Yeah, and he's, of course, target now to be to secure that clean sheet. He obviously goes in the family, doesn't it? His brother Dylan is at Cardiff, first team goalkeeper there. And again, a lot of potential for him. Rhys Byrne ahead of him in the ranks, of course. There's a lot of good young goalkeepers coming through the club at the moment. Which is good to see. Newport County on the left hand side with Charles Bullock. He runs through to Hodogan. One another free kick. Probably are not happy with the decision, but I don't think there can be too many complaints. So Newport County with this set piece with an opportunity to push players forward and line up on the edge of the O's penalty area. Hodogan then over the ball, hands on hips. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving on the box, but nothing to worry about. With the right foot, curls that one in, and it's a free header that goes wide at the far post. It was a decent free kick. Yeah, he was unmarked as well, wasn't he? He'd be disappointed on that occasion. Harrison Bright, I think, was the man who got his head to it, but he was left unmarked. It was a good delivery. Whipped in with that right foot, looking for runners, and there was plenty there for Newport County. They'd be disappointed they've not found the target from that free kick. Phillips takes the resulting goal kick. That's a good one as well. No surprise again, Clements competing for it. Late nine with Nkuma. In a sort of central position, options to his left and to his right. It's still with Nkuma. Nkuma threads the ball into the box, and Newport County, the players back behind the ball, are able to clear. And the ball is launched long. And chasing back is Harrison Soje, and he sees it go over the line. And let's hear from the chairman, Nigel Travis. He sends a message for the Orient fans. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight to see a great late Orient display and what talent we have in the academy. So it's delightful to see, and he encourages all Orient supporters to turn up on Saturday mornings to see some of the league games as well. So it's a very exciting time all round at Lake Norrin at the moment. And that is the message from Nigel Travis. So that's the message, encouraging supporters to come and watch the young kids on Saturday mornings where possible. And I'm sure there'll be a few after watching this that will be certainly incentivised to do so. It has been impressive. The O's, of course, forced Queen's Park Rangers to penalties in the uh, League Cup through to the second round of the FA Cup, through to the next round of the Papa John's Trophy. MK Dons, of course, are going to be the visitors here, and we're surely now late night on course to the third round of the FA Youth Cup. As we said earlier, it's Chelsea who await as the ball goes away for a goal kick. What else is happening in the FA Cup games that are taking place so far? There's been another goal since we last gave you the round of scores and it's from Gateshead who currently lead at Altrinham by a goal to nil. A couple other scores remain as they were. So Bristol Rovers still leading Oxford by a goal to nil. 55 minutes gone in that one. Cambridge leading Northampton by a goal to nil. Cheltenham, a goal up at home to Gillingham. Rochdale on the road at North County lead by a goal to nil. And Plymouth down at Home Park still leading Sheffield Wednesday. Clements in a central position, Nkuma inside the penalty area, it's a shot and it's a hat-trick for Daniel Nkuma and that was an excellent finish and the Exiles defence opened up with a very careful precise pass into the path of Daniel Nkuma who's celebrating in front of the club photographer Simon O'Connor. Yeah, well, we said didn't we not too long ago Dan Nkuma and Ian smith Kwasi both on a brace, who was going to get that hat-trick and it's gone to the O skipper, Dan Nkrumah. Really accomplished finish with the left foot. It was the most powerful strike, I think. He's hit a football before, but it had enough power to beat Evan Ovendale in the Newport goal. And again, really impressive. The movement, the space opened up for him. And he struck it. Sharp finish into that bottom left-hand corner to the goalkeeper's left, of course. And now we're going to see another substitution for the visitors. I think it's Kiban Ray to come on. And it looks like it's Ethan Morgan, the skipper, who's made way. 
So we've played 13 minutes of this second half and it is now just a case of how many. And I think there could be more, Matt. It feels that way, the way the O's have come out tonight. Look sharp from the off and showed real intensity and tempo about the game. Got themselves into an early lead and they've just built on it. Again, wonderful start in the second half as well. That early goal, which again, the Kruma has added to in the moment. Orient looking good value, 5-0 and coasting the game. So it is a throw to the visitors. And one that's going to be taken in the O's half. Graham lays it back. Ryan Phillips finds the goalkeeper out of his penalty. It goes back again to uh, Ryan Phillips. Is it out to the left hand side again? It was good pressing this time from Clements and a throw to the O's. And Tanga is the man who's going to take this one. Tanga has got the movement from Clements. It's touch just let him down on that occasion. It's a goal kick. Yeah, I've been really impressed with. Antonio Clements tonight, number eight for the O's, worked really hard in that midfield, a first year scholar as well, so it's a step up for him, but he showed a lot of maturity, here come the O's again. They do, it's uh, Smith, who I've seen, just ran away from him on that occasion, I do get the sense whenever, particularly in Puma and uh, Smith, who I've seen, are in and around the penalty area that it's going to open up, we've already seen one hat-trick, I think there's a good chance we might see a second, and on the far side, it's Charlie Pegram who's going to take this throw for the Rampanoes. Now we're gone, and late night, five goals to the good. Charlie Pegram, getting distance on his throw, finds Clements, has got away from the defender, one of one, the goalkeeper, and that is the six on the hour, and Clements deserves that one. It's late night, six, Newport County nil. I was just making the point about what an exceptional game he's had so far tonight, but now he's got himself on the score sheet as well. Antonio Clements there, just capitalising on the ball, just showing a desire to get there first, ahead of his opposite number, and they say he just stuck out the right boot, clipped it past Evan Ovendow in the Newport goal. It's six for the O's. What a performance. They do look really dejected now, don't they, the, the exiles? Yeah, they do. It's still a long way to go in this game as well. That will be the concern for Danny Elliott, the coach of these Newport youngsters. He looks on, arms folded on the edge of his technical area. He'll be looking for a little bit of leadership, a little bit of communication out there at the moment, but they do look very flat. They're 6-0 down, and they say they're heading out of the FA Youth Cup. They certainly are. It's uh, Newport County inside their own half they've been pinned back late night are working so hard both with and without the ball and Tangle's probably worked harder than anybody and that's an excellent ball Antonio Clements inside the penalty area trying to create space for either a cross or a shot he gets in the cross and Tangle's header goes wide he deserves a goal he's worked hard and wasn't far away was he again brilliant work from Antonio Clements who initially looked as though the cross wasn't on but he just pulled the ball back and jinked beyond the Newport defender clipped the ball over to the far post Tango was there trying to get the ball in the back of the net and add his name onto the score sheet but it wasn't to be it wasn't on that occasion Mr Jay Bourne saying the six goal advantage is well deserved I don't think there'll be any argument with that it is a throw to the visitors which Bullock takes is out to Tango Tango Plays it back to Grassi. It's on the halfway line with Clements. Clements working so hard, he's a very strong young man. So is this one, Tanga. It's a throw to Newport County. To give credit to Graham then, it was a decent tackle. And it's a throw to the Exiles. And one that's going to be taken by Charles Bullock. Taking his time over it. It's hardly surprising, there's no runs at all. He looks a bit frustrated, and the throw was delivered with hope rather than purpose. It was so comfortable for the O's to intercept. Here is a pat. It's a pat inside the centre circle. Plays it to Tanga. Tanga inside to Clements. And it's uh, 
offered out to the left-hand side on Charlie Pegram. Pegram will cross into the box and Leighton Orient have a corner, first of the second half. Yeah, it was unnecessary, wasn't it, from Newport player. Was Malachi Graham, the substitute there, didn't need to head the ball, but again, either didn't hear or didn't get a shout from the goalkeeper. In the end, it results in a corner for the O's, and it's a bit of a freebie. <laughs> It is one that's going to be taken by Zach Obiero. We've been impressed with his set pieces so far. And it's a short call on this occasion. It's back from Pegram. And the cross into the box has been cleared. Late night again. Picking up the second ball with Clements. He finds Harvest. Harvest takes it back into the Orient half. Lays it down the right-hand channel. It's been intercepted and laid back by Graham to the goalkeeper who's under pressure and he's been fouled on that occasion by Clements. Yeah, no malice in the challenge, no intent. Uh, Clements there just committed and again over and down, took a touch. I'm not sure he necessarily needed to, but Clements closed him down. He catch him and it is hopefully a free kick and an easy decision for the referee, Scott Rudd. Fan TV, enjoying the game tonight. What talent we have, he says. Definitely the future looks bright. It's with Graham. And plays it down the left-hand channel. And the cross is Kuachi. And that will be a goal kick to Lake Noyan. What's happening in the FA Cup, Matt? Well, Oldham have taken the lead at home to Ipswich. A big goal for them, scored by McGeehy. Has given them the lead. Plymouth have doubled the lead at home to Sheffield Wednesday. It's now Plymouth 2, Sheffield Wednesday nil. And Stevenage, I think they parted company with Alex Ravel today, didn't they? It's currently Stevenage nil, NK Dons 1. One of the latest goals from the FA Cup replays. There's been an equaliser as well at the Memorial Ground. It's Bristol Rovers 1, Oxford United 1. Sometimes the uh, timing of the uh, manager's departures does surprise me. It's uh, hard to see what could happen just before an FA Cup tie. As late now go in search of a seventh. And that with uh, Ovendale. Showed a bit of composure there as he plays it out to the right hand side. And Newport County with a rare excursion into the Orient half. But Charlie Pegram is there. And he's got support from Harvest, and Harvest finds. Daniel Kuma and the skipper offers it out to the right hand side and Tanga is the first there he's the quickest on the park that's for sure and Newport clear still inside the Exiles half and uh, Harvest makes the challenge at the expense of a throw but look keepy uppy there from Danny Elliott the uh, Newport County head coach for the youngsters Bullock takes the throw Back again to Charles Bullock, he gets the return ball. Bullock being pursued by Nkuma, and that was a good tackle from the hat-trick hero. And it's a throw to Newport County inside the Orient half. And it's a throw, they're taking their time over. Comes out to the substitute Graham, and Graham plays it from left, well he tried to play it from left to right, but Sodji intervened, and Pegram finds Noel Phillips, and Noel Phillips who's been a, a spectator I think it's fair to say in the second half with the clearance, the ball goes out to the far side, he's Dan Evans, chips it with hope rather than purpose and it's so comfortable for Phillips. Yeah, he's still working exceptionally hard the Orient team though, and it's just goes to ground, I'm not sure if he's picked up an injury or maybe a a little bit of cramp there, he's just stretching the right boot, isn't he? We'll have to wait and see whether Noah Phillips puts the ball out of play. Indeed he does, which allows his teammate to receive some treatment. I think the O's are going to make a change as a result. Ojo is the man that's, uh, I think, going to come on. A midfielder. It would be like for like, wouldn't it, Matt? 6-0. Yeah, I think Brian Sahar and Alex Lawless won't be too concerned. Of course, they'll be concerned about the, the player, but it does look as though it's more a touch of cramp than anything else. And it looks as though it'll be A.O. Ojo to come on. Number 16, taking on some final instructions from Brian Sahar. 
and Antonio Clements limps off. Been a wonderful performance from him. Got his name onto the score sheet as well. Been really impressed from what I've seen and hopefully more to come for him in an Orient shirt. Absolutely, there have been so many of the answers that have impressed, but uh, Clements is definitely a player that I'm going to watch and keep an eye on in terms of his development. But it's an opportunity here for uh, Ojo to come on and also impress. You put habit with Kodigan, who plays it out to the right hand side. Rose would want to maintain this clean sheet, and they will do with the Defending like that, that was excellent work by Harrison Soje. The ball goes out towards the far side. And the uh, ball boy rolls the ball along the line for Newport County. With almost 70 minutes of this one, 8.6 Newport County now. It's Newport County on their right hand side. And the ball into the penalty area. Good defending again by Harvest. And then that's uh, a shot which he's gathered well by Phillips. Yeah, giving something for Noah Phillips to do there, and he done it well. Good save to his left hand side initially. Emmanuel Harvest there. Getting his body in between the strike. It's a brave block. Another one who's impressed tonight, Harvest. I think he's just tucked in at times, played a little bit deeper when Orrin haven't been in possession. And so been dominant in that midfield, won a lot of tackles for Ipswich Town, it's Oldham 1, Ipswich 1 in the FA Cup as the ball goes away for a throw to Newport County Headline inside their own half, in front of the Justin Edinburgh stand a throw that's taken by Graham and it will be soon Graham, it's a suspicious throw that one it's uh, Newport County though, allowed to continue it's with Ryan Phillips Plays the ball out to the right hand side. Cross into the box has been overhit. Set angle. He's going to keep the ball in play. And then drives it long. Well, did he keep it in play? No, he didn't. And it's uh, a goal kick, which is a decision that surprised me, man. Yeah, it didn't look as though the ball had gone out, did it? But the linesman has raised the flag on the far side. So it will be a goal kick for the O's, which will be taken by Noah Phillips, of course. He'll be desperate to hang on to this clean sheet now after a 3-1 victory in the first round against Leverhead. And in Surrey, the O's have been emphatic tonight, 6-0 up against Newport County with Chelsea waiting in the third round. Flick forward, and Kuma digs it out to the left-hand side. Pegram switches out to the right. Nate Noyance concede the free kick. It was a, a push by Obiero. And, uh, a free kick to the visitors. Cambridge United extended their advantage. They have got a second goal in that one. It's Cambridge 2, Northampton 0. Zorian continue to press hard and put Newport County in a little bit of trouble and the ball has actually stayed in the ball's hit the corner flag and stayed in play there much to the amazement of those on the pitch they do look very nervous at the back the exiles and you can understand why good work by Harvest Manuel Harvest chips it down the centre it's been intercepted by Ryan Phillips and he plays it out to the far side ball into the edge of the O's penalty area good defending and it's gone away for a throw to Newport County and Charles Bullock is the man who's going to take this one and Brian Saar still encouraging his players making sure that they remain focused on the task the key objective is to maintain the clean sheet at the moment and maybe add to those six goals Tanga losing out as Williams and across towards the far post and it was a, a free header that goes over the bar without doubt it's the best chance of the game for the visitors isn't it Harrison Bright moved forward got himself into a position he was unmarked at the back post and really should have done much better good delivery free header 
as I say, should have at least worked the keeper. It's not had uh, too much change from uh, Soji then, but he was allowed a lot of space inside the penalty area as Phillips prepares to take the resulting goal kick. The ball is played down the centre and it will come out to Smith Guasi. He works hard to hold up possession and plays it back to Apat. Apat under pressure and uh, that was a push from Williams into the back of the tall Orient defender and a free kick to the O's. Is there more movement on the bench? I think there's going to be a couple of uh, substitutes that are going to get the opportunity to taste the atmosphere and experience playing on the uh, pitch here at the Bray Group Stadium. All these chip forward towards Smith Kuasi. Here is Obiero. Newport County, though, have one possession and they're coming forward with purpose. That's an opportunity for a shot and a consolation. And uh, well, it was a, a neatly taken strike in the end from Cardogan. And Leighton no, aren't going to have that clean sheet. No, it's a real shame, but it was a well worked goal. And full credit to Newport County for hanging on in there. As you say, Caradigan with an excellent strike with the left foot. Struck it hard and low into the left-hand side of Noah Phillips' goal. He was at full stretch, but he couldn't get a glove to it. And it's now Leighton Orient 6, Newport County 1. And you do have to give credit to the uh, visitors for not giving up and for fighting hard. And they deserve that consolation. And Leighton Orient will be frustrated and disappointed that it isn't a clean sheet and they need to maintain their focus 75 minutes gone and it's a throw to the O's and one that's going to be taken by Tanga who have been the players that have really impressed you tonight Matt there's been a few yeah there's been a number of performances hasn't there and of course you We'll see Dan the Kroomer, the captain, he'll get the plaudits. He's got the hat trick and his strike partner, Rion Smith Kouassi, as well, is impressed. But I think all over the park, Chafti Tanga came out. He was the bright spark in the opening 10, 15 minutes, which just gave the O's that incentive and high pressing football. Quick pace here. They come again with Pegram on the left hand side. Pegram stops and checks and then delivers the ball into the penalty. He did well to find. Giardo and uh, he plays it back to Nkuma and Nkuma finds Tango on the edge of the box. Tango with all the tricks trying to create something for a shot which comes in with the left foot. He really does deserve a goal. There's uh, Tango. They might have picked up the second of all those through Harvest who's worked so hard in the centre of midfield. Nkuma sees the ball go away for a throw to the O's. Yeah, again Paul still showing a little bit of character despite the scoreline for me tonight the O's have looked stronger in all departments of the pitch not just physically but technically as well so they've been so impressive and at times we've seen players using both feet looking very confident on the ball as well it's the O's that have it the ball is back with Kouassi hey Pat finds Harvest Harvest with the first time ball to Soji wins the uh, plots of appreciation from the most faithful would be very pleased they came tonight now Harvest looks to release Tanga ball has been intercepted and it's Newport County who are coming forward on the left flank of uh, Hardigan it's a, a push and a free kick conceded by Vieira. Any more goals in the FA Cup, Matt? No, I don't think so. Not since that uh, equaliser we reported from Connor Chaplin for Ipswich. But Oldham, Oldham won, Ipswich won his latest score. All other scores remain the same, of course. Bristol Rovers won, Oxford won his latest score. 75 minutes gone there. The remaining games are all just about hit the half-time mark indeed they have 
So some tough second halves to come. Some particularly long journeys as well for some teams. As they mentioned Ipswich up at Oldham. Long old slog that one. Bradford down to Exeter City as the ball is cleared by Noah Phillips down the centre. Almost uh, broke to Obiero. Newport County with Ryan Phillips. Ryan Phillips looking for support. He's got it on the left-hand side with Evans. Still inside the Newport County half. Here's the substitute Graham. Ball is out to the far side and Harrison Bright, but uh, good work by Soji. Tries to release Charles Pegram. And Bright makes his way towards the O's penalty. A good defending by Harvest. It's an excellent pass that finds Obiera. And it's Smith Grassi moving towards the Exiles penalty area. He'd love to complete his hat trick, and he might do now. He's got a shot that goes into the side netting. Yeah, his teammates were a bit disappointed there. Zach Obiero and Charlie Pegram in particular. Ron Mart, as Leon Smith, Guarsi went for goal, did the hard part. He's just signalling to the bench, I think, that I think he's picked up a knock there. I think he is going to have to be replaced. Might be the end of his evening. Looks as though Thomas. Agustidis is coming on for the O's, but we'll wait patiently as to see who that's for because, as I say, Rion smith Kuasi is currently down. We're going to need a little bit of treatment here, so Alex Lawless and Brian Saar may have to rethink their plans. Well, he's a striker, isn't he, uh, Agustidis, so that um, he could come on in place of smith Kuasi, who has impressed tonight and he did he would love to complete that hat trick yeah it was just the when he went down there it seemed to suggest to the bench that he needed to come off he's getting to his feet now but i think that will be the end of his evening impressive performance it's a young lad scoring big night for him in front of the floodlights and fa youth cup encounter but that is indeed going to be the end of his evening and he gets a warm ovation and the substitution is made and we see Thomas Agostivis coming on. And, uh, well, I've been impressed by Daniel Nkumu in his role as captain and he's given out the instructions now. And he looks as if there's a change of formation there. I think he's going to lead that line now, isn't he, with Agostivis, Pegram and Obiero just playing in behind him. As Newport looked to... The second here, certainly an opportunity as Oji goes to ground, but again supported Kwachi with a clearance and the substitute. Augustidis immediately involved. Coming forward with purpose, just uh, as Obiero got dispossessed on that occasion, ball played it into the penalty area and into the arms of Noah Phillips, although it is, yes, yeah, picked it up now, he's just uh, seizing the Newport County players and the ball is rolled underarm to Kwasi and he digs it down the right hand channel but it runs away for a throw to the Exiles and there's been an equaliser at Altrincham against Gateshead yeah half time in that one as you say Altrincham won Gateshead there's the scoreline there Cambridge 2-0 up at home to Northampton. Cheltenham leading Gillingham by a goal to nil. It's currently Exeter to nil. Bradford nil, the half-time score. Knox County trailing at home to Rochdale by a goal to nil. Oldham 1, Ipswich 1 is a half-time score. Plymouth 2, Sheffield Wednesday nil. Solly Holmores nil, Wigan nil. Stevenage nil, NK Dons 1. And Wickham nil, Hartlepool 1. They're the half-time scores in the FA Cup first round replays. Opportunity here for the O's with Ojibar as he played it square for the substitute and he's denied by the goalkeeper. And Stevis with the shot and it was saved by the feet of Ovendale and on the far side it's a corner for the O's and not the seventh. It was a wonderful opportunity for the substitute, wasn't it? Abkastidis just come on to the park, we're really taking it short. It's the rain that's pouring down now in E10. As Obiero tries to create 
something here. Read the ball into the penalty area. Newport County with players back to defend and to clear. Soji on the edge of the box now. Soji is going to go for goal. Now he's threaded it into the path of Nkuma. Daniel Nkuma is already on a hat trick. He's got support from Tanga. Nkuma with the back pass, back heel rather, into the path of um, Tanga. And Tanga with those quick feet, teasing or tormenting the Newport County defenders and winning a throw for the O's in line with the county penalty area. I think Tanga's the man who's going to take it. And Kuma sees it spin away. He thought it was going to be a corner. It is a corner to the O's. He's shown all the touches at the moment, isn't he? Dan Nkuma, say already a hat-trick to his name. Showing some silky skills out there as well. Just teasing the Newport defenders. And him and Jeff Tanga involved again, winning a corner, which Zek Obiera will take. You will? They've taken them all so far tonight. And some of them being of real quality. This one with the right foot is chipped towards the edge of the six-yard area. And it's uh, a looping header, which uh, Mod wasn't too far away from the substitute Ojo. Newport County looking to break on the right-hand side, but late night again working hard and regaining possession. It's with Charlie Pegram. Pegram pulls it back to Kawashi. Here's Apat. Manual Harvest, short to Tango. Tanga back to Kuwashi. Apat. He's got Soji to his left. Soji with space to move forward towards the halfway line. Charlie Pegram. Is it back to Ojo? Apat now. Drives it long. Well, not as long as he wanted it. And it's uh, Newport County with the opportunity to come forward. Again, good defending by the O's. Lake Nguyen play out to this near side where Tanga will chase and it wins the throw and Lake Nguyen is going to make another change and it's the older brother of Charlie this is Reggie Pegram that's going to come on it is and I guess Jeffy Tanga who's going to make way he's been impressive tonight worked really hard right from the off he was up and at him there was real problems for Newport and they say he is replaced by Reggie Pegram so the two brothers on the pitch for the O's. They are. It's the older brother that's uh, on the ball now. Reggie Pegram finds Charlie Pegram. And then Reggie slides in. And uh, Newport County are able to break. On the right-hand side is Harrison Bright. And Bright keeps possession as he crosses the halfway line. It's still with Bright. He's got support with Carrigan. Bright on the right hand side with the flick with the outside of the right boot. Finding Ray the substitute. Bright again, fires it towards the near post. That's a corner kick to Newport County. Yeah, good defending as well by Manuel Quachi. Just made sure that the attacking player couldn't open his body up. He was right behind him, Quachi, in a good defensive challenge. It will be a corner to the Exiles, but they have got plenty of men back to defend. Closing stages here with 87 minutes gone. And the corner, which uh, was a strange one. And Leighton no went had an opportunity to counter-attack. It was a good work by Williams to gain possession. And Williams with the back heel, which I don't think Caridan was uh, expecting. And the flag has gone up. Dave Allen saying this is, looks like it's a great result in the future. He's looking rosy. I don't think we can disagree. Your man of the match, there's a few to choose from. Yeah, well, I've got to give it to the skipper and the crewman. He's a player we've seen on the fringes of the first team squad. We've seen him on the road and here at Brisbane Road a couple of times. And this evening, I think he's been superb. A hat trick. He's really led the team well as well. He's shown some silky skills in the last few minutes or so, continuing to work hard and motivate his teammates. For me, Dave, he is the star. But it's been a very good team performance as well. It really has been. It's uh, Newport County that are coming forward in these uh, closing stages. And, uh, 
ball goes out to Bright on the right hand side. Late night, we gain possession. And it's now with Oviero. Looks up as he drives the ball forward. Oviero looking for support and also looking very comfortable on the ball. And that's an excellent pass to the substitute. Oviero again. Plays it out to the left-hand side. Charlie Pegram. And Charlie Pegram caught with a, a late tackle. I think he's OK as the shot from Stevis tests the goalkeeper. Zouf equal to that one. In the last minute of the 90. Six of the best so far from the O's. It's a throw to Newport County. And I think as uh, early as probably the uh, 12th minute, we thought that the O's would be on their way to face Chelsea in the next round of this, the FA Youth Cup. Ball flipped out to the left-hand side. And the cross into the box is dealt with well by the O's, but uh, Newport pick up the second ball on the edge of the box and Carrigan's uh, shot goes high over the bar and that's a goal kick to the O's. And there's a, another Newport County player down, I think, suffering the effects of cramp is young Charles Bullock. Yeah, we'll need a little bit of treatment here. As the fourth official indicates, there'll be a minimum of three minutes to be added on here. Well, I think we have to say congratulations to Brian Saar and Alex Lawless. Brian Saar, is, you know, he knows so much about uh, youth football and how late night can give youngsters the chance he made his debut at just 16 eight years of age and I mentioned earlier in the commentary that Alex Lawless was somebody that Justin Edinburgh always always singled out for just how hard he works on the training field and uh, another man who uh, leads these youngsters by example it's on the right flank with Reggie Pegram Aviero looking so comfortable on the ball Marcy finds a pat, he's got Soji to his left, he's played into the path of the left back, back again to a pat, and they weren't happy to keep possession in stoppage time, spoke too soon then that. Just trying to play that ball out to the right hand side, just he skewed that one, Daniel Quachi, but again, one who's impressed tonight, had that slip in the first half, which a little bit of fortune, but sometimes you have to earn that bit of luck. It's been a really strong performance all over the park from these young O's tonight. First team here on Saturday, of course, Sutton United, the visitors, just outside the playoff places at the moment. And Late Nguyen have a free kick. And uh, Daniel and Kuma, I think, might require a little bit of late treatment here. Yeah, I think he'll get up to his feet, referee. Just going over to have a look, of course. We know the O's will be facing Chelsea away in the next round. Those ties have to be played before the 11th of December. So I'm sure supporters will be keeping an eye on that as to when that fixture will be played. And they'll probably have a little bit of support as well heading to watch that one. Eight with the opportunity to grab a seventh in this stoppage time and it was... Uh, an opportunity for the substitute to try and find Nkuma. The ball just uh, slipped away from the man that's already secured a hat-trick. And 8 9 picking up the second ball with Ojo. It's now with Kuasi. Newport County continuing to press forward in these closing stages. And they have it inside the O's penalty area. And uh, Hamagan with the shot which is blocked at point blank range. Emmanuel Harvest tries to find Obiero. And that is it. And that's an excellent performance from Brian Sarr's youngsters. And they fully deserve their place in the next round and their opportunities to stay Matt, to take on Chelsea. Yeah, emphatic win for them. Good performance. Really strong from the moment the referee blew the whistle. I say stronger than the opposition in every department and Brian Saar and Alex Lawless will be delighted with that. We heard Brian Saar before the game talking about the importance of the development of course and 
and week by week it's, it's not always about the result but in this competition it is I mean, that, that's the fundamental of the competition it's knockout you have to win to secure your place in the next round and there's incentives as well to play against the Premier League sides the likes of Chelsea which these youngsters will now face it'll be a difficult task I'm sure Chelsea will be watching this game they do their homework even at this level they'll be watching on and I say they'll have one or two things to think about when that tie really is played because tonight the Orient youth team have really impressed they have they uh, scored very early on with uh, Smith Huasi with a, a couple and then of course they continue to press forward Daniel Nkuma grabbed his third He's got a fourth early into the second half he completed the hat trick in the 57th minute it was Antonio Clements who deserved his goal on the hour mark probably the only disappointment it wasn't a clean sheet yeah and there wasn't too much Noah Phillips could have done about the goal it was a well worked goal from Newport and it's a decent finish in the bottom corner but I say he had a very quiet evening watch the game being played ahead of him but he was called upon on a couple of occasions a couple of saves ones you'd probably expect him to make but as I say the defence in front of him so he never really looked under any real threat did they the midfield dominated in particular Harvest, Obiero, Tanga Pegram at times on the left hand side gave Newport one or two things to think about on that front three for the O's and Clements as well I mentioned him so he came off for injury but he really did impress me I thought he was a superb performance from him and Smith Karasi and Dan Nkrumah well they got the goals didn't they three for Nkrumah two for Smith Karasi fantastic team performance and that dressing room will be absolutely bouncing it really will and well done to Brian Sarr and Alex Lawless thanks to Matt Hiscock to Paul Hiscock and uh, also Barry Galvin for joining us at half time thanks to everybody for your questions, for your comments and uh, for watching. The future looks bright. It's finished here. Late night six, Newport County one. Well done, Matt.